Hello everybody, this is Reapy Ron. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about beginner loadouts for the Berserker. And the Berserker has quite a few strengths. Um, this video is mostly made towards lower level and newer players, players that probably are playing on normal and hard difficulties. So I'm going to suggest two builds and kind of go over what makes the Berserker strong and how to use it effectively as a beginner. So first up, Let's talk about the beginner. Or let's talk about the berserkers' passives. So the berserker has bonus damage to, with all of their weapons. Pretty basic. Every class has this. They have damage resistance three percent every five levels. So every five levels, you get three percent uh, passive damage increase against everything. Um, there's also a hidden ability with this too. Um, it's just hidden to berserker. It but it's that you take less damage over time because overtime effects affect you less than every other class. Um, why this isn't on here, I don't know, but it is a passive. You don't take as much fire damage or as much poison damage from like a bloat vomiting on you as every other class would because it just doesn't last as long on you. You also get night vision capacity with your goggles, which is okay, but it's not really that necessary. And clots can't grab you. That's really big. You can't get grabbed. So the first build that I recommend for Berserker is this build right here. Um, I would change this around as we unlock it, but this should be fine for right now just for getting beginners started. Um, so we're going to pick Skirmish to start out with because you get 25 or 20% 20 faster movement speed when just moving and 25% faster sprint speed when you have a perk weapon. This is really useful for you and you regenerate two points every second. This is one of the strongest perks in the game, in my opinion, or one of the strongest skills in the game. Um, high movement speed and health regeneration is amazing, especially when you're a melee class that wants to move in and out of positions very, very quickly. Up next is Vampire. Vampire gives you 20% more attack speed. Uh, either Vampire or Butcher do this, but this also gives you four extra points worth of health every time you kill a Zed. This is very valuable for newer players because... You may forget to use your syringe, you may not use it very often, your medics might not heal you, or anybody having a medic weapon might forget. Having Vampire to heal yourself up is just really useful, and 20% attack speed is fantastic. And then next we're going to go with Parry. Parrying uh, is one of the best skills that Berserker can use. It is a difficult skill to use, though. You kind of have to get the timings down right, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But when you do Parry, then you block 40% uh, of the incoming damage, and you get bonus attack speed and bonus damage for the next 10 seconds. That is really strong with Berserker. You can inflict a lot of damage within that time, but you can constantly chain parries together to where you're taking almost no damage and you're just dealing a ton of damage. So if you had these other ones unlocked and you're still kind of learning Berserker, I'd recommend either going Smash or Massacre depending on your weapon. Smash if you're using a more heavy hitting, heavy attack weapon like the Pulverizer. But uh, if you're using like something like the Katana, Massacre would be better, where it just attacks quicker. And then I would recommend Spartan here uh, with this particular build because you get to move fast in real time. Let's move on to weapons for beginners. And I'm only going to pick tier 3 or lower weapons for beginners because you never know what might happen. You might, you know, run out, fight a Zed, get killed, lose all your money and just be disappointed. If you're buying cheap stuff, it, it doesn't really matter. You can always buy a new one, especially with like Berserker where... There's a good chance you can just find your weapon laying on the ground again or, you know, where your weapon takes pretty much no ammo. So let's talk about your basic weapon. You your basic weapon is the Kroval. And you should get fairly used to this weapon. This weapon will help you um, when trying to learn how to block and parry correctly. Blocking and parrying is very important for a Berserker. You want to be at least blocking enemies. You don't necessarily need to be parrying them all the time, but blocking damage will certainly help you, certainly help your team and let you survive. One thing that I recommend new players trying to do when they block and parry is just simply watch how the enemy is attacking. Mostly watch where the arms are. If you see the arms come up, that is a good time to try to parry. And you can parry spam as well. So putting up your guard, putting down your guard, putting up your guard, putting down your guard. This will help you quite a bit, get just random timings as well. All right, more about the Kroval. The Kroval is actually a really good starting weapon. If you want to keep it, that's fine. It's a pretty strong weapon overall with upgrades. It doesn't need upgrades to be decent, and it has pretty good light and heavy attacks. Its bash attack is okay. Um, definitely use light attacks for all the small guys, really regardless of difficulty, because it'll just help you kill them a bit quicker unless you're pretty confident in your heavy attacks. Um, heavy attacks do take a little bit of time getting used to. 
Most Zeds, as the Berserker, you really don't need to fear all that much. Most of them you can fight pretty easily one-on-one. -on -one. Just don't let them corner you um, or push you into a bad position where you're fighting multiple at a time. Try to fight one or two, maybe even three at a time. At least with the Krovo, with certain other weapons, you can get away with fighting more, like the Hemoclub or the Pulverizer, which we'll go over some of the other weapons that I would recommend in this loadout. For anything like bloats, make sure to keep your distance from them. It's best not to even try to fight them with melee. Instead, try switching to your 9mm and shooting their head off. That will help you a whole lot more uh, with Berserker because bloats can actually do a lot of damage to you. They are very tanky and they can deal a lot of damage over time with their vomit. You don't want to be vomited on by a bloat. That is one of the Zeds that you want to look out for. Another Zed you want to look out for is potentially the Husk. If the Husk gets close and starts blowing fire on you, that can be really bad because it can take a whole lot of damage out very, very quickly and you might not be able to outrun its flame. All right, once you have the money available, be sure that you get yourself the Hemoclobber. You can keep the Krovel if you wish, but it's not necessary. So just like the Krovel, the Hemoclobber does blunt damage and it does it quite well. Now this thing actually has a unique function since it does take ammo. Its light attacks are still fairly strong and can kill most small zeds without any trouble. Even its light attacks can kill most medium zeds without much trouble. But its heavy attack has a healing wave. This healing wave heals you and all allies around you. This also inflicts poison damage to zeds, which is really useful. Poison damage pretty much means that they'll take damage over time and they have a high chance of kind of freaking out. They tend to run around randomly, which can really help you and your team out because it means that sometimes they won't come after you then. Now you can use it to fight husks. It is a little bit difficult and you don't want them to generally get that close to you because they can explode. But with its heavy hit, there's a high chance that it will cause them to freak out and you can easily move in and hit them. I should also speak about armor on Berserker. Should you buy armor early on or save? Um, with most classes, buying ar armor early on is a pretty good way to ensure that you're not going to die or that it's going to be much more difficult you for you to die, at least in the early waves. With Berserker, however, it's not really necessary, especially if you are running the... Um, vampire ability. So what about big zeds like this big old scrake right here? Well, I'm going to show you how to fight him. Now there's two potential ways to fight this guy. Either using your light attacks or your heavy attacks. If you have ammo, your heavy attacks are going to be by far your best choice. Um, if you don't, then light or heavy attacks is your choice. So first thing about going about fighting a scrake, you obviously don't want it enraged. If it is enraged and it tries to hit you, he usually does big swings that are at least somewhat easy to predict when he's going to hit. Um, you don't need to parry them like I did. You can just block them too. This will help reduce the damage heavily. But if you can parry them, you get that damage bonus and you take almost no damage. Now hit him with the overhead swing and just generally back up and move around him. Again, if he throws out these uh, random swings of the chainsaw, be sure that you're out of the way and not bumping into walls or anything. It's also okay to take a few hits like that, just to make sure that you get the parry. Uh, even if you don't and you just simply want to sit there and statically block every hit, you can. That works out just fine too. Berserker is incredibly good at fighting Scrakes, and just incredibly good at not letting Scrakes hurt you that much. Now, the second weapon is honestly your choice as to what you want to use with this loadout. The one I'm going to recommend is the Nail Gun. Because the nail gun honestly doesn't really need any upgrades to be good. It's already pretty strong and it's very cheap. You could alternatively buy the nail gun first, but I would recommend saving up and buying the Hemoclobber first. After this, you can upgrade these weapons or buy whatever other weapon you would like to go with them. It works perfectly fine, but these are the two that I'm going to be talking about. So the nail gun is one of the most cost effective weapons in the game. It has incredibly cheap ammo. And it's just a very easy to use weapon. You can switch it to either seven round shotgun fire or one nail at a time. One nail at a time is pretty good for trying to kill things like this. Also remember the nail guns nails do bounce. So you don't necessarily need to be hitting the enemies directly. You can actually bounce them into enemies further down the line if you want. 
And then with its shotgun fire, it can do a lot of damage. It can also bounce, so keep that in mind. There is something I don't particularly like about the nail gun, though, and that is it does have a slow projectile speed. So enemies can get out of the way of your nails, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not that bad uh, once you get used to it. It mostly only affects crawlers, and if you have something like the Hemoclobber, you can just beat the crawlers down pretty easily. Now there is one last part of the Berserker Arsenal I should explain, and that is the EMP grenades. So the EMP grenades, when thrown, they don't do very much damage. But they do cause the Zeds to freak out. When they're freaking out, they cannot use any of their special abilities. So, how a siren scream like this can hurt you, if you hit it with an EMP grenade, it can't scream. Um, apparently a bloke can puke on it though and kill it. It also works on bloats though. If you hit them with this, they can't vomit on you. They generally just don't know what's going on for a couple seconds. So it's a very strong tool for that. Um, and a very good use on special Zeds. This can also stop uh, strikes and flesh pounds from raging, which is really useful for your team. And uh, it can stop husks from potentially exploding, which will make it a little bit easier for you to get close to hit them hard. Uh, keep in mind though, these EMP effects don't always work exactly the way that they should. Um, if a Zed was already started the emotion, like if a husk was going to explode and you hit him with the EMP, there is still a chance that they could go through with the action of exploding. So now we've talked about the first build for Berserker, let's talk about the second beginner build for Berserker. This is the ranged Berserker build. So this uses the perks Dreadnought for more health, Vampire for uh, faster attacks and being able to heal yourself, and Resilience for just taking less damage towards everything. Um, this is a pretty straightforward build. You would usually go with Smash and then probably Berserker's Rage, just all left side for this one. You could potentially go with Massacre too if you wanted. But all left side, this is just to make you as tanky as possible and help you survive as long as possible. This isn't really the best build for Berserker at higher levels because some of these perks aren't as useful. That being said, this build is still pretty strong even at the higher ranks. Sometimes you see Berserkers running this and it's extremely strong if you have multiple medics on your team that can help keep you alive. You are essentially just a giant wall of meat that can just sit in one place and there's really nothing any Zed can do to you if you have two medics just constantly healing you. So once again, starting with Rain Berserker, you start out with your Crowbull. And even if you're not good at parrying, which is specifically why I didn't take parrying with this loadout, the Krovo can still help you kill just about anything. Even if you're really bad at parrying, sorry, and you just want to block, you can block for quite a long time. Keep in mind you don't have any sort of bonus movement speed like the other build, or bonus, uh, or just passive health regen, so Vampire is going to have to be the way that you get your health back. That being said, against any small Zeds you can get your health back extremely fast with Vampire. You probably just want to be using your light attacks with this build on small things because you're not going to keep the crowbull for very long. You can also use the 9mm more if you just really oppose using melee weapons, I guess. Although, like I said, parry and blocking is still a very important skill for all berserkers, even if you're going to be a uh, primarily ranged berserker. Alright, now for the ranged berserker build, I'm actually going to be recommending you two extremely cheap and very cost-effective weapons. Uh, for the ranged berserker. The first one is going to be the medic pistol, which may seem a little bit strange because you're playing berserker, right? Well, trust me, take the medic pistol. It is definitely going to pay for itself. Even if you have no interest in throwing any upgrades into it whatsoever, it will pay for itself. This loadout is going to be extremely dirt cheap, and even for people that just die every round, they're going to be able to buy this loadout or part of this loadout very often. So the Medic Pistol generally has enough damage to one-shot headshot any of the small Zeds. Whether it be Crawlers, or Clots, or anything like that. It can kill them pretty quickly. Even if you're not the best shot, and you're just shooting things in the body, this thing has a lot of bullets, and it is very, very cost-effective. It's extremely cheap to buy more ammo for it. And you get a lot of ammo for it, which is great. You also have the secondary fire on it, which can shoot healing darts. Now, you can use them to poison enemies, like what I'm doing here. Not really what I would recommend. You should be using them on teammates. 
to heal up your teammates. If you're playing solo, this weapon isn't as useful, but it's still not bad. All right, the second weapon I would recommend with this loadout is once again the nail gun. The nail gun is going to be your primary weapon for this loadout. The nail gun is extremely strong. It has its shotgun mode where you fire out seven nails. These nails can bounce. They do a lot of damage per shot, and this weapon actually scales very well with upgrades, but it honestly doesn't need upgrades. It already has pretty high base damage. You can also switch it to one nail at a time, where it's extremely uh, cost effective, because even if you miss, you're only missing one nail, and nails are probably one of the cheapest ammos in the entire game. So this build is obviously more of a ranged tank build. That's what your main goal is, is to hold areas and use this shotgun mode from your nails to kill any sort of small or medium zed without much trouble. You can also use it just one nail at a time, go for more headshots, or once again, even if you're not the best at hitting headshots, body shots of this thing still do a pretty good amount of damage. And in semi-auto fire, at least one nail at a time, it shoots fairly quick. It actually shoots quite fast for a shotgun overall. So the general way that you should use this loadout is by primarily using your nail gun as often as you can. If you run out of ammo or if a teammate needs healing, be sure to switch to your medic pistol, heal them up, or if you have nothing else, use this to shoot enemies. As I said, this loadout is incredibly cheap. It only costs you, I believe, 950 in total. That's all you need to get this loadout, and it works pretty much just fine on most difficulties, really. On higher difficulties, it is going to be more difficult to use this particular loadout, but for beginners, just playing on normal, just playing on hard, even moving up to suicidal, this loadout can still work for them, especially if they're playing in groups. You work as a pseudo medic slash range tank slash gatekeeper in a lot of areas. And like I said, the more medics you have in your team, the stronger this build becomes. Once again, it doesn't need medics on the team, but if you do have medics, it's even stronger. All right, so that'll end this little guide here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you haven't tried these builds out, try them out. Uh, they're pretty strong, especially at lower levels. Berserker is one of the strongest classes in the game, so Berserker is a great class to start out trying. So next up, I plan on doing Commando for beginner class and beginner loadouts. Uh, tell me what you think about that, and uh, if you'd like to see any other classes, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. I'll be sure to do at least a beginner and an advanced version of each of these. Um, certain classes have way more options than that, but um, I plan on doing each of these. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Hopefully you found this entertaining. If you did, be sure to like this video and subscribe. I plan on doing more of them, and I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool, and bye!